in module 5, we will discuss about the Frobenius method. Given a differential equation of the form d 2 x d t square plus t t into d x d t plus q t equal to 0, we may face where one function p t or both the functions p t and q t are not analytic at the point t equal to t 0. How to tackle this kind of problem is what we will discuss in the Frobenius method. We now discuss the more general singular differential equation of the form x double dash plus p t x dash plus q t into x equal to 0 given by equation number 1 where one or both of the coefficient functions p t and q t is not analytic at the point t equal to t 0. The idea developed here would suggest that we should try for a formal solution of the following form x t is equal to t to the power r summation n equal to 0 to infinity a n t to the power n where a 0 is not equal to 0 and mod t is greater than 0, which is given by equation number 2 and this form is known as the Frobenius form. We assume that the point t equal to 0 is a regular singular point, that is t equal to 0 is a singular point and the function t p t and t square q t are analytic functions. That is, we can express t p t is equal to summation n equal to 0 to infinity p n t to the power n and t square q t is equal to summation n equal to 0 to infinity q n t to the power n given by equation 3. For complete knowledge of the solution, we need to know possible value of r in equation 2 for which the expression 2 serves as a solution and then for each value of r we must calculate a 0, a 1, a 2 and so on. Now equation 2 implies x t is equal to summation n equal to 0 to infinity a n t to the power n plus r. Differentiating twice we will get x dash t is equal to summation n equal to 0 to infinity n plus r a n t to the power n plus r minus 1 and x double dash t is equal to summation n equal to 0 to infinity n plus r n plus r minus 1 a n t to the power n plus r minus 2. Therefore, x dash p t is equal to 1 by t summation n equal to 0 to infinity p n t to the power n into summation n equal to 0 to infinity n plus r a n t to the power n plus r minus 1, which can be written as t to the power r minus 2 summation n equal to 0 to infinity summation k equal to 0 to n r plus k a k p n minus k multiplied by t to the power n. Similarly, we can find the value of x q t which is equal to 1 by t square summation q n t to the power n summation a n t to the power n plus r. Both the summation goes for n equal to 0 to infinity, which after simplification gives t to the power r minus 2 summation n equal to 0 to infinity summation k equal to 0 to n minus 1 q n minus k a k plus q 0 a n multiplied by t to the power n. We substitute these expressions in equation 1 and we have the following equation after cancelling the common factor t to the power r minus 2 as summation n equal to 0 to infinity n plus r n plus r minus 1 plus r plus n p 0 plus q 0 plus summation k equal to 0 to infinity a k multiplied by r plus k p n minus k plus q n minus k into t to the power n equal to 0. 
which after simplification gives summation n equal to 0 to infinity n plus r n plus r minus 1 a n t to the power n plus summation n equal to 0 to infinity summation k equal to 0 to n minus 1 r plus k a k p n minus k plus a n t 0 r plus n into t to the power n plus summation n equal to 0 to infinity summation k equal to 0 to n minus 1 a k q n minus k plus q 0 a n t to the power n equal to 0. Equating the coefficients of t to the power n to 0, we get a n multiplied by n plus r n plus r minus 1 plus r plus n p 0 plus q 0 plus summation k equal to 0 to n minus 1 a k q n minus k plus r plus k p n minus k equal to 0 given by equation number 4. Coefficient of t to the power 0 is 0 and this implies a 0 r into r minus 1 plus p 0 r plus q 0 equal to 0. Let we put f r is equal to r into r minus 1 plus r p 0 plus q 0 which is the indicial equation as already seen in Euler Cauchy equation. We rewrite the last equation as a 0 f r equal to 0 given by equation number 5. Now, since a 0 is not equal to 0, equation 5 is true if f r equal to 0 which implies r into r minus 1 plus r p 0 plus q 0 equal to 0 which is a quadratic equation in r and it will have two roots say r 1 and r 2 and we assume r 1 is greater or equal to r 2. These roots called the exponents of the differential equation 1 at a regular singular point t equal to 0 will give two values of r for which the expression 2 may work as a possible solution of 1. Now, coefficient of t to the power 1 is 0 and this implies a 1 r plus 1 into r plus r plus 1 into p 0 plus q 0 plus a 0 into r p 1 plus q 1 equal to 0. This implies a 1 f r plus 1 plus a 0 r p 1 plus q 1 equal to 0 given by equation 6. Similarly, we find the coefficient of t square and which gives a 2 r plus 2 r plus 1 plus r plus 2 p 0 plus q 0 plus a 0 r p 2 plus q 2 plus a 1 r plus 1 p 1 plus q 1 equal to 0, which on simplification gives a 2 f r plus 2 plus a 0 r p 2 plus q 2 plus a 1 r plus 1 p 1 plus q 1 equal to 0. We next equate the coefficient of t to the power n to 0 and we get a n r plus n r plus n minus 1 plus r plus n p 0 plus q 0 plus a 0 q n plus r plus n p n plus a 1 r plus 1 p n minus 1 plus q n minus 1 plus a n minus 1 multiplied by r plus n minus 1 p 1 plus q 1 equal to 0, which on simplification gives a n f r plus n plus a 0 r p n plus r plus q n plus dot 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 plus a n minus 1 r plus n minus 1 p 1 plus q 1 equal to 0 given by equation 7. Equations 6 and 7 and the other following equations give a 1 in terms of a 0, a 2 in terms of a 0 and so on. Therefore, a n's are depending on r and a 0, a 1 dot dot a n minus 1 provided 
f r plus n is not equal to 0 for some positive n, in which case we cannot use 7 to find a n s. Thus, if r 1 is equal to r 2 plus n for some integer n greater or equal to 1, the choice r equal to r 1 gives a formal solution, but in general r equal to r 2 does not since f r 2 plus n is equal to f r 1 equal to 0. Another case where we obtain only one formal solution of the Frobenius form is the case where r 1 is equal to r 2. In all other cases where r 1 and r 2 are real numbers, the above presented procedure gives two independent real solution of 1. Consequently, if f r equal to 0 has two real roots r 1 and r 2 with r 1 greater than r 2 and they do not differ by an integer, then equation 1 has two linearly independent solutions of the form x 1 equal to t to the power r 1 summation n equal to 0 to infinity a n r 1 t to the power n and x 2 t is equal to t to the power r 2 summation n equal to 0 to infinity a n r 2 t to the power n given by equation 8. And these solutions have radius of convergence capital R which is equal to minimum of r 1 r 2 where r 1 and r 2 are the radius of convergences of p t t and t square q t respectively. We now consider two cases where r 1 is equal to r 2 and r 1 minus r 2 is a positive integer and we will see how we can find solution in these two cases. So, in case 1 we consider r 1 is equal to r 2. In this case, we have only one solution of the form x 1 t is equal to t to the power r 1 summation n equal to 0 to infinity a n t to the power n. The second linearly independent solution in this case is given by x 2 t is equal to x 1 t log t plus t to the power r 1 summation n equal to 0 to infinity b n t to the power n, where b n and n greater or equal to 0 are constants to be determined. Presence of log t makes the second solution a singular solution and hence most of the time is not useful. To find the second solution, we adopt a similar method, similar to the method used in finding a second solution of Cauchy Euler's equation in the case of equal roots. We rewrite equation 9 in the form x 1 t r is equal to summation n equal to 0 to infinity a n t to the power n plus r to emphasize that the solution x t depends on our choice of r. Then we get L x is equal to a 0 f t t to the power r plus summation n equal to 1 to infinity a n r f n plus r plus summation k equal to 0 to n minus 1 k plus r t n minus k plus q n minus k a k t to the power n plus r. Now, if we choose a n r as 7 requiring that the coefficient of t to the power n plus r to be 0 for n greater or equal to 1, we will get a n r equal to summation k equal to 0 to n minus 1 k plus r t n minus k plus q n minus k a k r divided by f n plus r given by equation 11. With this choice of a n r, we see that l x is equal to a 0 f r t to the power r given by equation 12. In the case of equal roots, f r is equal to r minus r 1 whole square and hence equation 12 implies L x is equal to a 0 r minus r 1 whole square t 
to the power r. Now, L x equal to 0 will give x 1 t is equal to t to the power r 1 multiplied by a 0 plus summation a n r 1 t to the power n. Please note one solution del del r of L which is equal to a 0 del del r of r minus r 1 whole square t to the power r which is equal to a 0 2 times r minus r 1 t to the power r plus r minus r 1 whole square log t t to the power r. This also vanish at r equal to r 1. Please note if I put r equal to r 1 in this expression both the expressions are 0 and hence L x del del r of L x is equal to 0. And this shows that del x del r at the point r equal to r 1 is also a solution and hence we can say x 2 t is equal to del del r of summation n equal to 0 to infinity a n r t to the power n plus r at the point r equal to r 1 which is equal to summation r equal to 0 to infinity a n r 1 t to the power n plus r 1 log t plus summation n equal to 0 to infinity a n dash r 1 t to the power n plus r which on simplification gives x 2 t is equal to x 1 log t plus summation n equal to 0 to infinity a n dash r 1 t to the power n plus r is also a solution of 1. We have just learned Frobenius method which is used to find the solution of the second order differential equation near the singular point. To understand the theory we will now discuss an example which we will follow step by step and to get a better understanding of the method which we have discussed. We will now consider Bessel's equation of order 0 given by t square d 2 x dt square plus t dx dt plus t square x equal to 0 where t is positive. We will here use Frobenius method step by step to get a better understanding of the theory which we have just learned. Since t equal to 0 is a singular point because p t is equal to 1 by t and q t is equal to 1 by t square are not continuous at t equal to 0. Also t equal to 0 is a regular singular point as both t p t is equal to 1 and t square q t is equal to 1 are analytic function near t equal to 0. So, we assume the solution of the form x t equal to summation n equal to 0 to infinity a n t to the power n plus r. Differentiating this twice we will get x dash t is equal to summation n equal to 0 to infinity n plus r a n t to the power n plus r minus 1 and x double dash t is equal to summation n equal to 0 to infinity n plus r n plus r minus 1 a n t to the power n plus r minus 2. Substituting these values we will get summation n equal to 0 to infinity n plus r n plus r minus 1 a n t to the power n plus r plus summation n equal to 0 to infinity n plus r a n t to the power n plus r plus summation n equal to 0 to infinity a n t to the power n plus r plus 2 plus summation n equal to 0 to infinity n plus r square a n t to the power n plus r plus summation n equal to 2 to infinity a n minus 2 t to the power n plus r. Equating the sums of like power of x equal to 0 we get r square a 0 which is equal to f r a 0 equal to 0. 1 plus r whole square a 1 which is equal to f r plus r a 1 equal to 0 and 1 plus r whole square a n is equal to f 1 plus r a n is equal to minus a n minus 2. 
equation 1 is the indicial equation and it has equal roots r 1 and r 2 both equal to 0. Equation 2 forces a 1 to be 0 and the recurrence relation 3 says a n is equal to minus a n minus 2 divided by n plus r whole square n greater or equal to 2. Since a 1 is equal to 0, so by 15 if we substitute n equal to 3 here, we will get minus a 1 divided by 1 plus r whole square and since a 1 is equal to 0, we will get a 3 equal to 0 and likewise we can calculate a 3, a 5, a 7, a 9 and so on and all these values are going to be 0. The event coefficients will be given by a 2 is equal to minus a 0 divided by 2 plus r whole square which is equal to minus 1 by 2 plus r whole square. Similarly, a 4 is equal to minus a 2 by 4 plus r whole square and substituting this value of a 2 here, we will get 1 by 2 plus r square 4 plus r whole square and so on we can calculate a 6, a 8. It can be proved by induction that a 2 n is equal to minus 1 whole to the power n divided by 2 plus r whole square 4 plus r whole square dot 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 2 n plus r whole square. To determine x 1 t we set r equal to 0 and if you do that you will get a 2 at the point 0 is equal to minus 1 whole to the power n divided by 2 square a 4 at the point 0 is equal to 1 by 2 to the power 4 into 1 by 2 factorial square a 6 1 by 2 to the power 6 into 1 by 3 factorial square and so on. And in general we get a n 0 is equal to minus 1 whole to the power n divided by 2 square 4 square dot dot 2 n square which is equal to minus 1 whole to the power n 2 to the power 2 n into n factorial square and hence we get x t is equal to 1 minus t square by 2 square plus t to the power 4 divided by 2 to the power 4 into 2 factorial square minus t to the power 6 divided by 2 to the power 6 into 3 factorial square plus dot 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 is one of the solution of 14. This solution is referred to as the Bessel's function of first kind of order 0 and is denoted by j 0 t. To obtain the second solution of 14, we get from equation 13 x 2 t is equal to x 1 t log of mod t plus summation n equal to 0 to infinity a dash 2 n 0 t to the power 2 n. To compute a dash 2 n 0, please observe that a dash 2 n 0 divided by a 2 n 0 is equal to d d r of log of mod a 2 n r which is equal to d d r of log of 2 plus r into 6 plus dot 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 2 n plus r to the power minus 2 which can be simplified as minus 2 times 1 by 2 plus r plus 1 by 4 plus r plus dot 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 1 by 2 n plus r and hence a dash 2 n 0 is equal to minus 2 times half into 1 fourth plus dot dot plus 1 by 2 n into a n a 2 n 0 minus 1 plus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 3 plus dot dot dot. Setting h n equal to 1 plus 2 1 by 2 plus 1 by 3 plus dot dot 1 by n, we get a dash 2 n 0 is equal to minus h n minus 1 whole to the power n divided by 2 to the power 2 n n factorial square. And hence we get x 2 t is equal to x 1 t log mod t plus summation n equal to 0 to infinity minus 1 whole to the power n plus 1 h n 
t to the power 2 n divided by 2 to the power 2 n into n factorial square, which is a second solution of 14 with h n as given by equation number 16. In the second case, where the method of Frobenius may not give the second solution of the Frobenius form occurs when the roots of the initial equation differ by an integer. Let r 1 is greater than r 2 and r 1 equal to say r 2 plus n 0, where n 0 belongs to the set of positive integers. In this case also, we have only one solution of the form x 1 t is equal to t to the power r 1 summation n equal to 0 to infinity a n t to the power n. But we are not sure about the second solution, it may or may not be of the form x 2 t is equal to t to the power r 2 summation n equal to 0 to infinity b n t to the power n. This is due to the fact that f r 2 plus n equal to 0 when n equal to n 0 and equation 6 becomes 0 dot a n 0 equal to minus summation k equal to 0 to n 0 minus 1 k plus r 2 p n 0 minus k plus q n 0 minus k into a k n equal to n 0. And we cannot find the coefficient a n 0 if summation k equal to 0 to n 0 minus 1 k plus r 2 p n 0 minus k plus q n 0 minus k into a k is not equal to 0. In this case equation 14 has a second solution of the form x 2 t is equal to x 1 t log t plus t to the power r 2 plus summation n equal to 0 to infinity a n t to the power n, where finding b n is quite a non-trivial problem. But if 18 is not true, that is if summation k equal to 0 to n 0 minus 1, k plus r 2 p n 0 minus k plus q n 0 minus k into a k is equal to 0, then we can choose any value for the coefficient a n 0. In particular, we choose a n 0 equal to 0 and once we have a n 0, we can use the recurrence relation 11 to find other coefficients a n r 1 for all n greater or equal to 1, n not equal to n 0. In this case, when 20 is true, we have both the solution given in Frobenius series form. In this module, we have learned about Frobenius method which gives you an idea to solve a second order differential equation near the singular point. We have also taken an example which, which has explained step by step the method as discussed in the theory. In our next module, we will continue with more examples of the Frobenius method. Thank you.